Hello everybody and welcome back to Writer's Block, the channel where I help you to plan, write, edit and publish your novel. My name is Joshua Bennett, author of this book right here. And today we're going to go over one star reviews of Twilight. Now about a month ago I did a video titled why bad reviews are not necessarily bad. This is a follow on video from that video and the whole point of this video is to show that you shouldn't be afraid of bad reviews because just because you get bad reviews doesn't mean that you can't still be incredibly successful. That's why we're doing an incredibly successful series like Twilight. This is, I believe, video number 11 of making a new video every day for the next 30 days to see if my YouTube channel grows from it. So come back in 19 days and I'll release a video about that. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm all about giving no-nonsense writing advice and dissecting popular stories to see what authors can learn from it. With all that being said, let's jump straight into the first review. So this person rated it one stars and they recommend it to no one, not even my worst enemy. And they write, okay, I have to say I picked this book up partly due to all the hype and partly because it involved two of my favorite genres. I mean, so many people had recommended it to me and I finally got sick of hearing about it. So I picked it up and read it, or I at least tried to. Let me first say that I'm a huge romance and vampire slash supernatural fan. So when I first heard about the book, I was really excited to read it because it combined two of my favorite genres, but I really regret buying and forcing myself to finish it. She rants on for a little bit more, but we'll skip all that and go down to a lot of fans wonder why I hate the book so much. And here is the list and it's pretty long. So get ready. Number one lack of characterization. I'm just gonna pause there for a second. So in my other video, I said, one star reviews generally probably have very good advice that authors can learn from. And this review is a very good example of that because she goes on to list a lot of reasons that she does hate it. So it's not just, I hated it, one star review. Those reviews suck. This is, I hated it, one star, but this is why I hated it. So number one, lack of characterization, Bella. Okay, I absolutely hated this girl. She was the worst female protagonist I've ever read about. She's stupid, shallow, selfish, and just plain annoying. Not to mention she's pathetically dependent on Edward. I mean, come on, no girl should be that dependent on a boy. Yep. Yeah. Not only is that pathetic, but it's very unhealthy. She was also a clumsy little damsel in distress who was dumb enough to get herself into situations that she couldn't get out of. I would have loved for Maya to have given her a backbone so she could have done something useful instead of whining and doing stupid idiotic things that no remotely intelligent teenage girl would actually do. Not to mention the fact that she is apparently very plain looking. If that's the case, then why are there several guys fawning over her? And according to Maya, one of them is a teacher. Um, ooh. Bella is a Mary Sue. Simple as that and I hate Mary Sue's. So this is, uh, she raises a very interesting point here about Bella being a Mary Sue in the story. And that has actually been a very big point that a lot of people have had problems with the Twilight series because of, because Bella being a Mary Sue. Stephanie Meyer actually hit back against this and said, the reason Bella is considered to be a Mary Sue in this story is because Bella is a human in amongst hundred year old vampires that have superhuman strength and speed and some form of special ability. Anyone in that situation, if they were human, would be considered a Mary Sue or a Gary Stu. And she actually went a step further and wrote Twilight, but swapped all the genders over to show that a man in that position would still be a Mary Sue or a Gary Stu. And the point about Bella putting herself in really stupid situations is just, that's a common theme throughout the entire series. Next is Edward. Okay, this boy is just way too possessive and stalkerish. It's not romantic of him to sneak into Bella's room and watch her sleep. It's creepy and wrong. Yes, say it again louder for the people in the back. It is not romantic to sneak into someone's room and watch them sleep. It is creepy and wrong. Oh, and bad boys usually don't sit there and say, I'm dangerous, stay away, all the time. I also hated the fact that Bella described some part of his body every other page. It was completely unnecessary. Okay, we get the fact that he's hot, Bella. Now move on. I could go on and on about all the characters. Every single one of them was flat, cardboard cutouts that did not seem realistic at all. This person continues on and rants for about six more paragraphs. But uh, I skipped all that and I got down to the last one. Messages. What messages does the book send? 
I am somewhat appalled at the messages that this book sends out. They are so anti-feminist, it's disgusting. It's perfectly okay to have no goals or aspirations or even an education. Just get yourself a man and he'll take care of you. All Bella wants is to be with Edward. Some aspirations, huh? I think, uh, I think we all go through that phase when we're teenagers where uh, the most important thing in our life is uh, our romantic interest and we would give up everything for them. We'd give up our education and our future and this, that and the other and it all just seems so Romeo and Juliet and so us against the world, you know? I have a feeling, I feel like we all go through that as a teenager. So I don't actually feel like that wasn't, you know, a bad message. I just think that that's relatable for teenagers. It's also perfectly okay to like someone because of their physical features. This is not love, it's lust. They have nothing in common. He likes her because she smells nice and she likes him because he's hot. When you have several guys fawning over you, pick the hottest one. Looks are the most important thing. It's okay if the guy you like sneaks into your bedroom and watches you sleep at night before you're even dating. That's completely normal and romantic, not the least bit creepy and stalkerish. Okay, yeah, that, that one I can see being a problem. These, I guess this review is about uh, the first Twilight book, but while we're talking about bad messages being sent, I want to talk about uh, in the later books when Bella keeps putting herself in dangerous situations so that she can see like an apparition of Edward or whatever. That's a terrible message to send. That's just my little rant. All right, this is another person that has rated it one star review and they said i hate this book i'll probably end up reading the rest of them because if i don't people that love this thing will think they can convert me if i just keep reading in short the writing mechanics are atrocious the dialogue is stilted and absolutely wretched the characterization is bad loose jumpy and the progression is occasionally senseless the main characters themselves are not compelling selfish shallow lacking the deep thought that comes with a true passion and love and instead leaping recklessly into stupid and deadly situations when anyone with a brain could see 60 other possibilities that should have been tried first. That's a big problem people are having with books these days is just dumb characters doing dumb things. You can have smart characters that occasionally do dumb things if they're in a hyper emotional state and they're not thinking right. But if you have dumb characters that are just continuously doing dumb things, throwing themselves into danger, people have gotten sick of that trope. People are people are done with it. People are ready to just burn those books. And unfortunately, Twilight is well regarded to have that trope. This person recommends it for idiots and people who enjoy bad dialogue. Save your time. Here's the entirety of Twilight in 20 dialogue snippets and wiggity whack intermission. First 200 pages. I like you, Edward. You shouldn't. I'm dangerous. I like you, Edward. But I'm dangerous. Next 50 pages. I'm a vampire. I like you, Edward. But I'm a vampire. I'm dangerous. I still like you, Edward. Next 100 pages. I like you, Edward. You smell good, Bella. I'm dangerous. I like you, Edward. Damn, you smell good. I like you, Edward. Also, I glow in sunlight. Next 50 pages. A vampire baseball game. I wish I was kidding. Last 100 pages. Help me, Edward. I'm being chased. I'll save you. Help me, Edward. I'm scared. I'll save you. Oh, Edward. You smell good. One half star for lack of quality and one half star for being unintentionally hilarious. Especially page 314. I don't actually own Twilight, otherwise I would open to page 314 and find out what happens there. But judging from his review, I'm gonna say it is the baseball game, maybe? Anyway, so that was some um, one star reviews of Twilight. Like I said, I wanted to make this video uh, as a follow on from my why bad reviews aren't necessarily bad video to show that just because, you know, you get bad reviews doesn't mean you can't be wildly successful because, you know, these handful of one star reviews doesn't even come close to counteracting the absolute onslaught of five star reviews it's got. The one star reviews uh, actually raised some good points and if you're an author and you read your one star reviews, hopefully they are very constructive like these ones or some of these ones specifically were. It can really help to hone your writing style. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thank you very much.